No. Now y'all supposed y'all supposedly y'all can hear me now. Alright. So uh this is improv two one. So y'all tell me. Um thank you, sister G, brother D. I know y'all out there, JP. My hard driving soldiers is out there. All right, y'all. So you see the lead topic. The lead topic is the spite swirlers and the bad black women. We asking y'all to divest. Since y'all are always talking about divesting, you guys are always talking about, oh, well, you know, black men are so, we're so, we're, we're such evil creatures. Okay, we're such evil creatures. Please divest. Please go. That way, man, we can clear up a lot of this. See, the reason why, one of the reasons why uh, black men and women are having such bad relationships is because we don't know how to have good relationships. We don't know what's involved in a good relationship. The good relationships have sacrifice. But in the black community, if you sacrifice, you assemble. If you sacrifice to make a relationship work as a man, you a simp. So it's already, you already set up for failure because other men are going to tell you you a simp for sacrificing, for for compromising. And that's what long-term relationships do. They show you how to compromise and sacrifice. You have to. You can't just have everything all your way. You ain't God. God is the only person that can have everything his way. And everybody else, we're going to have to submit. We're going to have to submit sometimes. Sometimes you have to submit for a greater good. Sometimes you have to submit for the greater good. There's many people <clears throat> that had to make uh, sacrifices for the greater good of the people, man. And sometimes you got to sacrifice, especially if you're a man. You're going to have to sacrifice. you got to learn how to sacrifice. But like I said, Unfortunately, in the black community, most black men are taught the, the, the backwards lesson that sacrificing is simple. Compromising is simple. No, you're going to have to compromise, especially in a, in a civilized society. There's going to be compromises. You're going to have to make compromises. But how can, you comp how can you learn how to run a civilized, a whole society you can't even compromise in your own house. You can't even compromise with your wife and children. We under the impression that, oh, you don't have to compromise. But other, excuse me, other people, other men of other nationalities, they understand that to get things done in their household, they're going to have to compromise. They're going to have to learn how to um yeah, compromise and, and, and work with the other person. You ain't going to have it all your way, man. It's ain't Burger King. You ain't going to have it all your way. Not in a relationship with, with another person. You never go, you're not going to have it. You might have it most of, most of the time your way, but you ain't going to have it all of the time the way you want to have it. I think this is a bad thing, and especially black women, a lot of them have this idea in their head that they can have the relationship go their way all the time. And they need to learn how to sacrifice. We got it bad on both ends because black men are told if you sacrifice and compromise, you are a, uh, you a simp and who wants to be a simp. And then on the other end, you got black women saying, I want to be able to run everything. I want to be able to, I, I should, I, I'm the queen. You know, and my feet ain't never going to get dirty. You got to carry me everywhere. <clears throat> and you and me as a man, I'm supposed to be running behind you like Minnie Mouse. Happy to throw all my money behind you until you spit it all up. And then try me and go get somebody else who got another bag of money. Anyway, let's start off from the lead attorney. I was watching the lead attorney yesterday. And he had a pretty good study on there from Time Magazine. So let's look at that. Let, let, let me share my screen, y'all. And let's 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 dive into that one. Shout out to JPSR show last night. It was good. 
good, good. Uh, let's see. I want to share the screen here. Y'all give me a minute here. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> All right. So here's the lead attorney, and he's going to be discussing this little study and that survey or whatever that Time Magazine had about black marriages. Shout out to, Shout out to April, too. Shout, Shout out to Darius and April. April. Look, Look at how they, they have our boy, boy right? right? Oh, uh, we, we got, got our man, man. He's, he's on the phone, phone. He's, he's on the computer, computer. He's, he's on the Zoom, he's got, got the tie the and the, uh, the, the coat, but, but then at, at the bottom, he's got the shorts, shorts right? But look where he's living. You know, he's got his laundry up. Y'all see his laundry? Got the damn washer dryer five feet away from him. Now, shout out to him. He's got a little, he's got a work bench. He's got a sit up bench. But then you look at his gut, right? Has he been using the bench? <laughs> It's rough, rough out here, guys. What, what, what's the title of this? Men are now more likely to be single than women. It is not a good sign, especially if you're living like this. Right? Now, you know, we've heard a lot about this article. It just came out on the 5th, guys. It just came out on the 5th. It says um, a third of adult men are living with a parent. Single men are much more likely to be unemployed, oh. financially fragile, oh. and to lack a college degree. Oh. Lower median earnings. Single men earn less in 2019 than in 19 than in 1990, even adjusted for inflation. Come on, get to right? it, Tila. Get to it. So get to it. There, there's a lot going on, but I want to I want to I want to focus you guys. I want to focus y'all's attention to this paragraph. This is the real paragraph right here. Here we right? go. Here we go. What does this say? This says now the trend has not had the trend of, of single men. This trend has not had an equal impact across all sectors of society. Yeah. What does it say? Here we go. Y'all ready? Come Black on. people. The Negroes. Come on. Us black people. We black people. Come on. We black people are much more likely to be single, 59%, than any other race. Let's stop that for a second, right? Shout out to Jose Judah. Stop the show. Black people are much more likely, much more, not just more, not 2% two, 2 more, 3% more. Black people as a race are much more likely to be single. Uh-huh. Right? 59%. Let's take a look. Come on. Say, Come on. oh, are you ready? Uh-huh. Are you ready? Uh-huh. And black women, black women, 62% are the most likely to be single of any sector. Asian people, 29%, are the least likely to be single followed by whites, 33, and Hispanics, 38. Okay, y'all heard TLA. Y'all heard it. This is Time Magazine, a respected periodical. This is not the TLA, him just pulling up figures out of his ass. He, this is Time Magazine. You can go look it up online like I did. I looked it up. It's right there. You can go and find it for yourself. You can go and find it for yourself. It says black women are 59%, 59% more likely to be single. So that that pushes us into the next question. If that's the case, then how come, how come black women are single? How come they single? Why is that the case? Let me shout out Sister G. Sister G. That goes both ways. Give each other your best. It should be, Sister G, but our young people ain't learning that because, you know, the fathers are not in the house to show how to give, how to do that yin and that yang. So it's a, it's a bad situation. Then on TV, what do you got on TV? Canaan, Ghost, uh, Big Meech. I mean, you got every kind of drug dealer, uh, dope seller, a crazy person out there. Same thing for black women. Black women, they got them out there. Every kind of promiscuous situation, they got them out there. Either they either they screwing the president 
Are they screwing this person, that person? They're doing every kind of promiscuous. And by the way, they got them in a situation. They got them bragging about the promis promiscuity. They got black women bragging about it. Black women are the only women that brag about their promiscuity. They brag about it. It's a badge of honor for them to be promiscuous in, in today's society. It's a sad situation, Sister D. But like you said, uh, you got to give, you know, you got to give each other your best. That's how you bring the best out of the other person is giving them the best. Now, if somebody taking advantage of you, then you don't want to give them their best. You want to just try to find them. Try to find a quiet way out of the situation. But if you give somebody their best and they, you reach and you make them reach and they make you reach and you make them reach, and you, you're going to finally get what you guys are reaching for. Right? But let's get back to the, uh, let's get back to what the TLA, that study that Time Magazine said. Why are black women so highly unlikely to be in a relationship that uh, lasts? How? Why? What is the problem? I tell you, uh, some of the one of the problems is they never learn how to be in a relationship. Like I said before, when I started the process, somebody started the broadcast. Relationships are about compromise. You have to learn how to compromise. You have to learn how to negotiate. You have to learn how to. Sometimes you getting what you want. Sometimes you got to give. More. I mean, sometimes you're giving more. You're the one that's going to give more. And sometimes you're the one that's going to get more. It just depends. Relationships about compromising and sacrificing. But in today's world, these women, they so used to getting validation on social media, and they don't have to compromise their beliefs. They can be saying, I'm a Christian, and be out there with half their behind hanging out, getting having dudes give them money. And just because they're wearing a bikini or whatever, whatever else they're doing out there. And they can they can say whatever, profess that they're doing this, but on the end, they're just making money to do whatever. And I'm not no judge of nobody. I don't think you should do things because of safety reasons, not because I'm just this proved person. Yes, I believe in there should be a code of conduct, but I can't force that on no one else. You know what I'm saying? If a if a woman wanna do what she wanna do, I can't force I can't say, you know, I'm I'm not gonna try to make her feel bad because she's trying to put food on her table. I would just say, hey, you should transition out of that into something else. Hold on, Sister G. I see you got something else going on. Sister G, most young women today only care about the bag, period. You're right, Sister G. I mean, they they just care about the bag, but that's how they've been taught. You see what I'm saying? Oprah taught him to care about the bag. Wendy Williams told him to care about the bag. Tyra Banks told him to care about the bag. Fante, all these people told them to care about the bag. So that's where they're going with the bag. Lizzo teaching them to care about the bag. All these people, man, they're teaching them to care only about the bag. I may be, you know, by myself, but I got a ton of money. Okay? But the ton of money ain't going to be it's nothing like having a man there in your household to make sure stuff goes right. And nothing like having a man there. If you really understand, right, I'm sure you can attest to that, Sister G. It's nothing like having a man who is competent. You know, if some ish go down, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the they're going to be begging you to call the police to get this man off of them, right? So that's what you want because money can only go so far. Money can only go so far. Anyway, let's explore some reasons why black men, black women are so, uh, it's, it, you know, they, 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 they so tendency to be a, a single. 59%, 59% of black women are, 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 you know, subject to be single. That is a high percentage. That is a high percentage of women. Why? Is it because they're ugly? No. Is it because they have some type of, uh, you know, 
uh, hygiene condition? Most cases, no. What is the reason? What is what are some reasons why black women would be have such a high rate of being single and propensity to be single? I had some people hit me up on one video I had recently, and they say, "Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about." But if black women were so desired by all these different races, how would they be? How would how would they have such a high single single rate? White boys will be getting scooping them up. The Latino brothers will be scooping them up. The Asians will be scooping them up, and all else will be scooping them up. It would the demand for black women would be so high, it wouldn't even be enough black women to go around. But on the contrary, on the contrary, there is an abundance of single black women. An abundance. If there wasn't an abundance. They'll, all of these dating apps would go out of business. I would think my, probably over half of them are just filled with black women. Why? Why black women? Why? Is there any black woman out there that can come on here and tell me one of the reasons? Besides saying the, the, the most famous reason that black women give is that there ain't no good black men out there. We don't want to hear that reason because we know that's not true. Let me show you some statistics. Let me show you some statistics. Let's Yeah, let me let me let me show you some statistics. Y'all because I know y'all going to say, "Oh man, he just talking." I mean, not not my hardcore people, but I mean, I'm just saying the the, the people that's out there, you're going to say, "Oh, man, he just talking, you know, he ain't tell I'm I'm going to show you some statistics." Oh, I want to show that. Uh, let's see. Share share screen right yeah uh okay this and here we go okay this is black marital status stats right okay black men 33 percent of black men are married 27 percent of black women are married so that's a little that's not too bad that's not too bad right but that's still a lot less. Black men are not getting married as much either. Why? Because they want to marry black women. But you got so many single black women out there and they so crazy. Black men, but 52% of black men never married. 50% of black people are never have never been married. 50%. That's crazy, man. 30 years ago, it was probably 20%. Now it's 50%. Black men, 52% never been married, and that's growing. Black women, 48% have never been married, and that's growing. That's growing. It's a, it's, it's a crazy situation. It's a crazy situation. Uh, let's go stats by race. 30% of, of black people marry. 50% never married. We saw that. 43% of Latin, uh, Latinos are married. 43% never married. 52% of white people are married. 28% are not married, never married. 58% of Asians are married. 31% are not married. Yeah, man, we put in the rear in all of these different categories. Wait, 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 wait. So y'all saying, I'm going to go be with me. Oh, I'm going to go get me somebody of another race. Okay, I'm going to get you that in just a minute. Who black men marry? 85% of black men marry a black woman. Now, this is census data. This is source. U.S. Census Bureau, current population. This is 2017. 85% have a black wife. 85% of black men are married to black women. 85%. So the whole, well, black men are. All they want is white women. The next time somebody tell you that, tell them 9% of black men are marrying white women. 9%. All 100, what's the difference between 100 and 9%? 91%. The 91% are 85% of these men have black wife. 
So don't listen to that whole garbage. Oh, black men just want white women or other women of other races. Let them, let them be gone with that garbage. Yes, some do. Some dudes do. But most black men, 85% of black men have a black wife. Who black women marry? 93% of black women have a black husband. 93%. So the ones that say, I want to swirl them, you can't swirl. How are you going to swirl? Men of other races are not looking at you as desirable. Only black men are looking at you as desirable. That is the reality of that. Well, let's go. Let's, let's, get, let's get in deeper. Because I remember Snuggles asked me this question. Hey, I, I said, hey, black men are, mar are the most married interracially. Out of black women and black men. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, no. I, I said, she said, show me the stat. Here's your stat. Here's your stat, Snuggles. Four, uh, black men are married, have a white spouse, 409,000, as opposed to black women that have a white spouse, 172,000. That is a huge difference. Huge difference. And you can see black men are married way more to spouses of other, uh, other races. Right? So that was the stats I wanted to show you. I want to show you these stats. See, it's a it's a lot to this. It's a lot to this. It's not just, oh, we just out here talking and we just out here saying this, you know, stuff for just for entertainment purposes. No, no. This is the real. This is the real. We come in with stats, we come with numbers. If you don't like the numbers, don't blame us. Blame the Census Bureau. They're the ones that came up with the numbers. Now let's get to these spite swirlers. What is a spite swirler? What is a spite swirler? Uh, that's, a, that's a phrase I coined, which means that they get so upset from having a bad, ex bad experiences trying to date black men, trying to date bad black men, and expecting bad black men to at some point turn into a decent black man that they instead say, I'd rather date uh, somebody of another race, a bad man of another race than a bad black man, right? So that's what they do. So they doing it and in spite of the fact that they are good black men. Why? Because what do they call good black men? Squares names, they don't want to date them. And I say they, I'm talking about the spite swirlers. I mean, the ones that say, you know what, I'm going to go swirl. Now, just because you swirl don't mean your relationship going to work out. Just because you date interracially doesn't mean the relationship going to work out. Matter of fact, interracial relationships have a have a lower, uh, lower uh, rate of you know, lasting than uh, uh, same Culture relationships, certain same culture relationships. But anyway, hold on one second, y'all. Hold on one second. All right, y'all, I'm back. Here we go. All right, so what's the deal? What what What's the deal? So what? how do you get to be a spite swirler? Like I said, you have problems dating black men. See, what happens is a lot of these women, they'll date, they meet guys at places where you don't get a chance to actually see the real person, right? Meet him at the club, meet him at the bar, meet him at Ralph's, or you meet him someplace where you can't really sit down and talk to them. Then you want this man to take you. I mean, this is the average black woman, not all black women. You got sisters like Sister G, JP, they kind of understand how things are supposed to go. But the average black woman wants a guy to take her out, spend hundreds of dollars every day. Hundreds of hundreds of dollars every day. Buy her a big expensive meal. 
take her to expensive places, and she want to be a, and she want to brag about the fact that she didn't have sex with the guy. And I understand that. I understand that. But why go if you don't want to have sex with this man? Stop going. Stop accepting gifts that are high price ticket items. Don't don't accept no trip to Vegas or no trip to Hawaii. And you know you're not gonna sleep with this man. Why would you go there? I'm just gonna go so I can say I went. Why? You know the man gonna be expecting you to to uh, you know he, what, what do you think he's gonna be expecting? You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, there's a there's a there was an episode on Seinfeld where um, this guy wanted to date Elaine, and so he got some tickets to a super, he got some Super Bowl tickets, you know, out of state, and so he he had got um a room and everything. He got everything, laid it all out and everything, right? Invited her. She was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll go." So she goes over to Jerry's house and tells Jerry, "Guess what? I got we got tickets to the Super Bowl." And so Jerry knew that she was like uh, a, a I need my own room person. So he said, "Oh, so you going to have your own room?" She goes, "Uh, well, I don't know." So then she calls the guy, finds out. Guy says, "No, I got one room. One room." She said, "Oh, two beds?" She goes, no. he goes, no, it's one bed. She's like, oh, no. She, she, she's like, don't you think it need to be two beds? When she started coming like that, he was like, you know what? I, I can't make it. I can't make it. You know what I mean? Because because he was like, she's a grown woman. She should know if I'm inviting you out to some place, especially out of town, probably because I want to take you out there and have sex with you. Okay, go on and go. But just remember, don't get mad when a dude start pressing you for sex because you should know that that's what, if, you, if you're if you accepting uh, high, high price tickets, items, then you should know that something's coming on the back end. It's like with the mafia. You know what I'm saying? You accept a gift from them, eventually they're going to come to you asking for a gift. Whether you can do it, whether you're going to put you in a bad way or not, they don't care. They got to do what they got to do. You don't want to be in a situation where somebody got leverage on you. You want to be in a situation where people are doing things because they want to do them for you. They feel such a kind of way about you that they want to do things about you, for you. You don't want people to do things because you got leverage on them or you're going to tell their wife or you're going to tell their husband. Who wants to be in a situation like that? Anyway, these, let's get back to the spice swirlers. So they got so much spite against us as black men. But check this out. The spite is for them having, they have an issue with us. They have an issue with us as black men. But they're the ones picking the dudes that they going out with. So they pick these a-hole dudes, a-hole black men. They pick a-hole black man one. They pick a-hole black man two. They pick a whole black man three. Then they say to themselves, I'm going to jump ship. I'm going to go start deal, dealing with the white boys. Okay. So it's out of spite because you ain't even really went out with no good black dudes because good black dudes, you call them lame. You call them lame. You call them squares. You ain't going out with them. Anyway, that's my opening, y'all. That's my opening. Bad black women, especially. We want you out. If you feel like you got a swirl and you feel like you like you going to threaten us by I'm, we, we going to go to the white boys. Really? If there was such a high demand for you, if there was such a high demand for you, you would be out of here. People would be there would be no black women on the market. But because there is such a low demand for you, there's such a high abundance of single black women. And black women today's in the today's marketplace, yeah, you look good, you're fine, you're beautiful, and all of that, but you don't know how to keep a relationship together because you don't know how to compromise. The man don't know how to black men don't know how to compromise because they gonna call him a simp if he do compromise. So he don't want to compromise. You don't know how to compromise. You trying to run everything like you did, like you do at the office. It's a big mess. So we can never come to each other. On, on, except on the rare occasions where both people understand what it takes to make a relationship work. Anyway, y'all, what do y'all think? 
what do y'all think? I'm gonna let y'all come up and y'all tell me, man. What what is it? What do y'all think, man? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? Let's let's talk about these bad black women. These bad black women. What's a bad black woman? What is a bad black woman? I'm talking about a kind of the Hold on, let me let me get let me get Sister G. I see you up here, Sister G. Let me get lots of pretenders out there, brother C. And that's on both sides. You're right. You're right. But see, you know what the problem, Sister G, is I can only teach the men what to watch out for. The women, and then the men don't even want to listen to me. And nobody really wants to listen to. Just like your hu your husband came out here and gave a million dollar game presentation. We had two people in here. I mean, so it's, it's like it's like the people don't want to hear the truth. I, and I don't know, you know, maybe that's maybe they they caught up with the magicians of this world. I got money, I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that, I got a fat booty, whatever. And they caught up with it. I was on the Kings. I was on the Kings with conversations last night, and I said, don't get caught up with a fat booty. Look for a woman that you would want to make a make your wife you know what king said i'm still gonna chase the ones with my boot i mean what can i do i'm still gonna chase women with, with that fat booty i ain't gonna marry you that was good that was i mean that made sense but why even chase somebody you ain't gonna marry why even do it because we got this we we we, we got something wrong something's wrong with us something's wrong with us sister g but we need women like you and other good women to teach these other youngsters because, and you, and I think, I know I got a hard job. The, 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 hard, the job that me and your husband got, that's a hard job, right? Nothing compared to the job y'all got trying to teach these young black women. Nothing compared to that job. That job is immensely harder than the job we got. Immensely harder because they just do not listen. Black men, They'll know the truth, but they'll run from it. Black women won't even accept it. They won't even accept the truth. You can tell them, hey, look, man, this is how it's going to go. They'll be like, no, that's not reality. My reality is this. And they just make their own reality. What can you do? What can you do? How can you do anything about that? How, how can you do anything about that? What can you say? I mean, <laughs> so that's a hard job, and I hope I hope more good women like yourself be out there and trying to teach in any, in any fashion y'all can. Whether you got a YouTube page, a Facebook group, whatever, 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 however way, because you never know who's gonna stop by your spot and listen. Here's something you say, just like me. I, I, you know, I try to give good advice to people, right? I try to. But a lot of people don't want to hear it, but that's okay. I'm not worried about the people that don't want to hear it. I'm worried about that one or two that do. The one or two that's going to say, you know what? The old man got a point there. I can't I can't dispute that. Let me hear a little bit more of what he got to say, right? Yeah, we got a lot of pretenders out here. But we got a lot of, Sister G, we got a lot of people that's straight out with it. Like the bad black women, we got a lot of we. We know we got a lot of bad black men. I mean, we know we got a lot of men. Black men are the key to the black community turning around. We know that because they just will not. The world is waiting for us to turn this thing around, right? But we got a lot of bad black women, man, that lead the men astray because the men are so caught up with sex instead of works that they just get caught up and they get derailed and they follow these women into hell. A lot of these women, man, ain't no good. We got to get rid of the bad black women. That's why when they talk about, we, we, we all know the, the names of those women that's out here on YouTube telling women, black women to divest. Please, by all means, I'm, I ain't no hater. I ain't no hater. You want to divest? Go on and divest. Please go divest. Please. Because that's going to clear the deck so that we can get rid of them women. They can go out there and get beat up by every other race 
and then we can deal with the good black women to be left on the table, and we can start matching and the good black dudes with the good women. We just keep on teaching these young black men how to treat a woman. Man, a lot of these young black men, they don't even know how to treat a woman. They don't know how to talk to a woman. They don't know how to respond to a woman. They don't know how to do nothing. They think I got to... They think they got to talk to a woman like you talk to a man. Hey, nigga, what? what? Hey, yeah, get, get up, sit down over there. They talk to a woman like you talk to a man on the street. They don't even know how. And that's unfortunate. That's why they need not only they need not only femininity classes because I heard somebody say something that was really on point. She said, I think it was Pink Book Lessons. She said, femininity classes ain't gonna work all the time because what you're basically showing, telling somebody is how to how to fake like they're feminine until they get what they want, and then they're gonna be themselves. You need more than that, and I agree with some of these women. You need more than that. You need they need to understand why why you need to be yourself. You need to. God told us accept your own and be yourself. Be yourself. If you're a bad person, be yourself. That way you can learn. People could teach you, hey, you know what? You This is wrong. The way you act is wrong here. But a lot of black women don't want to do that. And I'm just talking about black women today. Believe me, for those of you out there that are saying, you never talk about black men. Trust me, I'm going to get to black men. That I, I, I really get on black men. They don't want to hear it, though. They'd rather hear me beating up on black women. So they won't come. If I just talk about them, they won't come. <laughs> reality of that. Reality of that. Sister G, hit and quit mentality, really going back to Caligula or the 20, 20th century Babylon. You know what, Sister G, you couldn't be more writer. See? But where we come from and our, our original teachings as a people, black people, we never had. We didn't have nothing called pedophilia. We didn't have nothing called homosexuality. We didn't have nothing called bestiality. We didn't have nothing called hit it and quit it. You couldn't do stuff like that or where we come from, and they'll put you to death. They'll put you out of the society. You can't just do that. You can't live like that. Cause that's totally uncivilized, and it'll, and they realize it will break down the society. Unfortunately for the Greeks. They didn't see that that they didn't see that that behavior was going to break down a society. The Romans, by the time they caught it, it was too late. It was just too late. You know, they, they, they society was already on the verge of breaking down. The Egyptians, the Ethiopians, unfortunately, had too much influence from the uh, European countries, and they they started experiencing all of that stuff, and they broke down. You cannot have that in a society, those different things in society, and it lasts a long, 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 long time. It's just not going to happen. Hit it and quit it is nothing. Who is going to trust their daughter with a dude that's out there hitting it and quitting it? But see, hit it and quit it got popular because there ain't no fathers in the house. Just like Prawn. Prawn exploded because there ain't no fathers in the house. You have a big prawn epidemic in the 40s and the 50s when men were in the house. Prawn exploded in the 70s and 80s when the father was being actually tossed out of the house by the government. Oh, you want this welfare? Okay, well, then you got to get rid of that man. Here come prawn. Bam! Right? They hit it and quit it mentality. Right? We now, as black men, we now, we feel like, hey, I'm somebody. If I can have sex with a hum hundred different women, I'm somebody. That makes me somebody. That don't make you nobody. When you connect with a person sexually, you, your souls are connecting. Your souls are connecting. How do you think you can remember the, the person after you, you will remember almost everybody you had sex with because your souls connect. Your souls connect. And if your soul is connecting to a person whose soul is not good, 
you're still connected to them. And it's hard for you to unravel your soul away from them. See, we as men, I was telling, like I said, I was on the Kings. Uh, shout out to the King. Shout out to uh, all the brothers, Chef, King, E. Black, and Brother Daryl. Shout out to the Brotherhood. Um, I was on their show last night, and I was, you know, telling them, you know what I mean? It's it's hard. It's hard. You in you the best thing you can do to have your life run good is pick the right spouse. Men and women, pick the right spouse. But especially the men. Especially the men. Because as a man, you have to sacrifice so much. You have to sacrifice so much. You have to unlearn so much to make a relationship work. You have to unlearn so much bad information as a man. Same thing as a woman, but really as a man, man, you you have to unlearn so much bad information and sacrifice so much of your spirit and time to make the relationship work. How you gonna do it if you if if you pick the wrong person, you in trouble. The wrong person leads to divorce, bad children, maybe drug addicted children, maybe children that's coping with some other kind of situation. And your job as a father, I recognize when I had my boys, I had three boys. And uh, they're all grown now, thank God. But I have recognized that my job, it was tough a lot of times. But my job was to keep them out of the gangs, keep them out of the police station, and keep them out of the gangs. So I had to sacrifice. I couldn't, I couldn't go do different things that I wanted to do. I used to like to play basketball all the time, but I couldn't do that because I had to be at home doing homework or whatever, or just be that presence that was there so that they knew, hey, you're supposed to be here at this time. You're supposed to be here at this time. Now, that oldest one, that oldest one gave me a run for my money, but the other ones, I guess, saw how I handled the oldest one, and they kind of calmed down. They were a little, you know, there was a lot less trouble than that old, my oldest one. He was the rebel base for sure. He was, whew, man. I remember one time, <laughs> I remember one time the school called, and I think I told you guys the story. The school called my house and said, uh, you know, brother Clarence, your, uh, your son is not, has not attended any of his classes today. We don't know where he is. We saw you drop him off, but we don't know where he's at. Just to let you know, he hasn't been here all day. It was probably, it was after school, right? So Buddy comes strolling in the house about 6 o'clock. Hey, man, where you been? Oh, I was at school all day. Oh, really? Yeah, I was at school all day. I said, oh, okay. I, I go over to the, um, I go over, because they had left me a message, because I was, I was actually at the school trying to pick him up. So they left me a message on the machine, so I I turned the message on and uh, let it play for him. And it was this principle. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Brother Clarence, you know, I'm just letting you know that your son, he, he never attended any of his classes. Oh, first thing out of his mouth. That's a lie. I was in all my class. I just was sitting in the back. They didn't see me. You know what I said to him? I said, you know what, brother? I got to give you credit. At least you sticking with that lie. You didn't tell me all six of your classes, they didn't see you. Yep, that's what happened. I said, man, I had to leave it alone. I said, I had to walk away. But my point is, I had to put up with a lot of stuff like that with him because I had to be there. If I hadn't been there, he would have really, you know, been off the, off the hook. All of them would have been off the hook. But I got them all through high school without no police drama, no Nothing. No gangs. I kept to keep the gangs away from them. Uh, and all the gangsters on the street knew this is my son. So they knew, hey, don't mess with him. Leave him alone because I will be on your front door if I see what's going on. And I ain't like Brother D. I ain't got no big old gun or nothing like that. I'll, I'll be on your door tearing, ripping your house apart. <laughs> but anyway, What's the point of that? What's the point of all of that? 
The point of all of that is there's so much temptation out here for our young black men. Turn this heater off. There's so much temptation out here for our young black men to make them go haywire, make them go another way. And then nobody teach. I tried to teach my sons. This is how you treat your mother. This is how you treat your family. Let me see what I, let me see what I got here. Brother D, peace and blessings, man. I forgot to, I mean, I forgot to hit you up, Brother D. I know you're supposed to teach something today. I forgot to hit you up, man. But, uh, you know, I'll connect with you later on because uh, I know you was telling me you wanted to teach something today. And I just completely, if I got caught up, brother, I, being, being real with you, man, I got caught up. So I forgot to contact you. But uh, we'll, we will hook back up for sure. Uh, Sister G, same, Brother C. My only son and grandson have never been to jail or any gangs and maintain a 4.0 in school. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You got to be there. You got to be there. I mean, you got to you gotta have a presence. You got to have that presence. And I know Brother D is like me. You know, you just, just them mentioning that you're going to get involved with the situation. They'll be like, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We ain't got to go that far with it, right? But that's how you have to be in today's world. But even though, how 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 do we get these young black men to start looking at these women as there's something of value? It's hard to get them to see women as black women as valuable when they're looking at the BET awards and half the girls' butt is hanging out, right? <laughs> or they shaking everything out there. See, what brother D said, brother D. No problem. I've been mirrored in business paperwork. Anyway, it's all good. I know you're a businessman. See, I know you understand, brother, because I'm the same way, brother. I'm, I got so caught up in so much stuff, man. I was like, you know, I was like, today, I was like, hey, brother D is supposed to teach something. I said, but I know he's busy because if he had the time, he would have hit me up and said, hey, brother, this is what I'm going to teach on. But so I said, he's probably busy too. But I knew I would see you today. So hear from you today. So yeah, man. But, um, it's all good, brother D. You know that, man. It's all good. Anytime you want to teach something, you just let me know, man. We'll make it happen. Uh, yeah, but how do we get these young men to learn how to be with a woman? They're not seeing it on TV. Is the media showing them? No. They're looking at the baby's videos. They're looking at all of these other hustlers' videos. And they learning that a woman ain't nothing but something to spank in a hotel room. They don't think about nobody in no productive way, no woman in a productive way. And then you know what the cold part about it is? I always thought about this, man. I was like, man, I wonder what I wonder what Snoop is. I wonder what Snoop would say if a dude like him was trying to go out with his daughter. I wonder what he would say. I wonder what he would think about that. Or Dr. Dre or any of them. What would these guys think about some dude trying to go out with their daughter? Would they say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I was I was in the dog pound, so I understand. Go ahead out. Go ahead on with her. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. It's like Jamie Foxx said, he ain't gonna he gonna go. He he even though he was tearing people's daughters up. He's going to now look at his daughter like she's something special. Her her vagina is something special. While he was beating up every other dude's daughter's vagina. But how can that happen? How can that happen? See, if the father's not there to instill certain things in the in the, in the little girls even. These, these girls are going to look for, they're going to look for the energy that would come off of a father, off of any man, even a bad man. And then they keep picking black bad men. So what they decide is, I'm going to swirl. I'm going to I'm going to jump. I'm going to hop the fence because I can, you know, what they really saying is my judgment is so bad when it comes to black men. It's safer for me to go with, be with someone. That's what they really saying. The swirlers, that's what they really saying. Now some swirlers, they grew up, they just like white white men. They just they just grew up liking that. It's like some black men. 
I don't care what you do. I don't care how good a black woman is. They just like white women. Some guys are like that. But that's a small minority. Small, small minority of people. The majority of swirlers uh, and fence hoppers, they are doing that because they had a bad situation happen to them. They had a situation happen where they got hurt. And they got hurt. And the last time they got hurt, they said, I got the answer to this problem. It, I, I got it. It's black men. Black men are the reason why I'm having all this issue. Let me go jump the fence over here and go be with, and then they have the same issue over there. It's packaged a different way, but they have the same issues over there. A white boy flip them, flip them, flip them, flip them, but they don't ever want to take them home. They don't ever want to marry them. They don't ever want to do nothing most of the time. Like we said, we looked at the numbers, right? 90-something percent of the time, they're not going to have nothing to do with you as far as a marriage situation. The only people that's marrying black women at a high rate is black men. Yet, they're calling us lames and, uh, uh, you know, fools and all these other different things, squares. They're calling us all these different names, but we're the only ones marrying black women. Ain't nobody else trying to marry black women. Yes, they are. See, what about Russell? Will uh, you know what about this? Okay, so you'll take the point. Oh, 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 one percent of white boys that's actually marrying black women, and project that as that's the norm. That is not the norm. If that was the norm, there wouldn't be a black. If, if that many white dudes was trying to get to black women, or any other race was trying to get to black women, there would be hardly no black women out there because they would be all scooped up by men of other races and even the black men that could get them. But the contrary, it's so many single black women out here. It's so many. Some places, 16 available black women to one black man. The lead attorney said yesterday, it's so many black women in Atlanta, Georgia, black women are leaving. Because it's just a taco party. It's just a taco party. It's just like when you go to a club and they 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 let a bunch of women in and then they let one man in and they let a bunch of women in. Why? Because they don't want a sausage party in there. They don't want just a bunch of dudes in there. They got to let a whole lot of women in there so that the dudes will go in there to make the line long, right? I mean, just, just being real with it. Black women, man, are the least desired. And I and and is it because they ugly? No. Is it because they don't know how to dress? No. Is it because they have some type of uh, issue about sexuality? Most black women I know they're pretty open sexually, especially the ones that have had at least a little bit of experience. They're pretty open sexually. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, black women are the only women that will brag about. They are. They will be promiscuous and brag about their promiscuous. They brag about it in movies, in 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 TV shows, in media, and music. They brag about how how promiscuous they are. To them, it's a badge of honor. To them, it's like, oh, I'm 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 hitting this and hitting that and hitting this and hitting that. Oh, I'm. It's a badge of honor. They don't even see it as a bad thing. So let me let me explain to you why having a bunch of having a bunch of um, having a bunch of bodies is not a good thing for men. It's not. It's not a good thing for women either. But let me explain to you why. I have done this before. I will do it now. A woman's body is supposed to only hold one set of DNA at a time from a man. It's a receptor. It's supposed to deal with one set of DNA at a time. If you give a woman multiple sets of DNA, Confusion sets in. 
if a man's DNA gets into the body, the the just like a vaccine will find the key to eliminate the vaccine, a man's DNA getting into the bo- woman's body, the body will find a way to slow that down, will not let it replicate, not let it ask for uh, uh, testosterone. But when you have multiple and multiple and multiple sets of DNA, a men's DNA in your body as a woman, that DNA is going to start demanding testosterone. And it's going to make your body release testosterone. Why do you think you're so manly? You have all this sex with all these men. And now you act like a man. Why? Because all that, all that men's DNA that's in you, yeah, some is going to come out as waste. But some is going to get into your cells. And it's going to try to ask the body for what it wants, which is testosterone. It's just the presence of that DNA is going to release testosterone. Because the body is a big, like Brother Jarvis said, the body is a big chemicals plant. And it'll release whatever it thinks needs to be out there. Oh, we got test we 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 got. Male DNA, we must need to release some testosterone. That's why you have to get a cleanse. After each man that you be with, you need to take a break, fast from sex, and take, get a cleanse. Get a cellular cleanse at the cellular level so you can become a cellular virgin. A cellular virgin. What good man is going to want a woman who's got a bunch of other men's DNA all up in her. Now, of course, she ain't going to come out and say, oh, yeah, I got 100 bodies behind me. You're going to see it in her behavior. You're going to see the manliness in her behavior. When she got a lot of men's DNA in her, she's going to have a lot of manliness in her. Right? She's going to have man's ways. I remember one time I was just starting out to date this sister, and the sister said, Oh, she's something happened, and she said, "Oh, that's the man in me. I got too much man in me." And she's telling me up front. <laughs> she t- she basically was telling me up front. She got a used v- used and abused vagina with a hundred thousand miles on it, right? She said, "Oh, that's the man in me that got me acting like that." Needless to say. Uh, that I slowed that situation down to a halt. I don't want a, I don't want a woman. I don't want a woman with man in her. Just like a woman don't want a man with woman in him. I don't think so. One of y'all sisters, let me know. But I don't think it's no woman out there that said if a, if if a, if a, something happened and uh, her dude said, well, that's just a woman in me. You'd be like, what? What what you talking about? Well, see, you ain't going to hear that out of a man. You're going to hear that out of a woman. Why? Because women, men are transmitters. We're not receivers. If somebody makes us a receiver, brother, we, we have been altered. Verily, verily altered. And then probably a woman ain't going to want us no way after we've been altered like that. But a woman, a woman is a receptor. She's a receiver. So if you out here dating men, that's why I was trying to tell Mahogany Pink and her followers. If you dating men, okay, you gotta you gotta clean yourself out after each man. You gotta take a break. You can't be you can't be dating multiple men. But black women are the only women that will brag about dating multiple men at the same time, being sexually active with multiple men at the same time. Why? And why do they think this is a good thing? Why do they think men think that's something that a man would admire about you? Why would you think a man would admire hearing about that or seeing that in your behavior? See, we just, we we got our signals crossed. We got our signals crossed. We don't even know what we're doing out here. And people like me, we out here telling people, you know, the real they don't want to hear it. They want to go on shows. I, I went on another show. I went on another. I went on another live stream, and all they did was attack me 
for even suggesting that black women should have some accountability. You know what I realized? I realized, I said, you know what? These people don't want to, they don't want to learn. See, I, I always think everybody like me and truth trumps everything. If, if I'm telling something and you say, brother, that's not correct. This is the truth. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be like, oh, okay. Yeah, you make it, you make it, you, you prove your point. I'm good. Because all I want is the truth. Everybody ain't like that. So this place, they didn't want the truth. Now, my question is, how then are they going to advance or grow if you don't want the truth? How you going to grow? How you going to improve if you don't want the truth? Right? I used to, I used to have a, uh, I used to go to jujitsu classes. I mean, without fail, at least four times a week. We was, we we were we were helping me and brother Jarvis, man. We was we was helping, man. We was we was doing so many different things, and so they told us, hey, we don't have enough people in here that know about this particular martial art. You guys go learn it, so you guys can teach it. So we went, and uh, in this particular martial arts, they teach you how to fall down and roll, so you don't get hurt when somebody throws you down. So anyway. One of one of the instructors was when we, when we were being shown the move. He was supposed to throw you so you could roll, but he kept throwing me down, and I was falling. He wouldn't let my hand go so I could roll. He was boom hitting me. I was hitting the mat. Boom, boom, boom. After the class, I went to the teacher. I said, "I said, hey man, how come you know you told so and so to do this, but?" He was he did it this way. And my teacher said, brother, how you land is on you. You think the person that's fighting with you is gonna try to make sure you have a comfortable landing? He said, How do you land is on you? Boy, did I go out to the park, start falling and rolling that day. I went out and start and I ended up being one of the best best rollers and fallers out there where they throw me down. I, I I practically didn't even feel it. But my point is, I never would have improved if they didn't put that pressure on me. I never would have improved at that if they hadn't put that pressure on me. So you need pressure in in relationships. You need pressure. And black women, a lot of them don't want no pressure. Now I'm not saying black women are the whole problem. Maybe the whole. Problem. I'm never saying that because we got a lot of good black women. But they are clouded over by the bad black women. Man. The bad black women are the ones that's getting on all of these YouTube channels and and all the IG and they making all of this stuff. The, they the ones get all the shines. The bad black women. It's unfortunate. You try to have a good black woman out there or a black woman that you know is is trying to be you know. Uh, show other black women how to be with the program. Look at the sister, man, that sister that just quit. Another dating coach for women that just said, I give up. I give up. These people are almost unteachable. They're unteachable. They, they, their expectations are in to the moon, yet they don't have no, they don't want to put no effort into making it work. Right? You think about your grandmother and your grandfather. They put all this effort into making the situation work. I don't care what your grandfather did. Your bro, your your grandmother and your um, your grandmother always had that hot plate on the table. She always had the table set. She always had that hot plate on the table when that man got home from work. Even if she was pissed off, you didn't know it. You didn't know nothing about it because guess what? The family was more important to her than you, than her lashing out at him in front of everybody in the household creating chaos. Let me tell you something, man. And most of y'all here is kind of, you know, y'all know better already. But let me let me say this for the people that's going to watch this on the replay. When you argue in front of children, when you argue in front of children, 
what it does, it, it makes children go crazy because what it says to them is, I, these are the two people I love the most. But now I see I can't, I can't trust one of them. Who is the one I can't trust? See, all this, this all goes in their head in a split second. When they see their parents argue, they go, one of these people is untrustworthy. I can't listen to one of these people. So what if they love you? They, what if they love both parents? If they love both parents equally, then they say, you know what? I can't slight one and, and keep the other one. I can't do that. I can't bear to see the one I slighted be upset. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to slight both of them. I ain't going to listen to neither one of them. I'm going to go out in the street and listen to somebody. You wondering why your children out there doing drugs or they out there in the street hanging on the corner? Because we arguing in front of our children. We driving them crazy. They have to make these logical decisions and they hear black children, you know, why do you think black children are so good at sports? Black children are so good at sports because they can do the mathematic computations in their head so quick, so young. They can do all those computations so young. They can stand there and say, they can dribble a basketball and they go say, okay, from this area on the court, I need to use X amount of, of pounds of force to push the ball up and through the hole. Or from on this side of the court, now at this distance, they can measure the distance, they can measure the amount of force they need to put through. I mean, they can do all those computations. Yeah. You think they can't do a computation to see when their parents are fighting, they ain't going to do it computation in their head say, you know what, both of these people, one of them is crazy. One of them is, is not trustworthy. I can't trust one of these people. Which one is it? Because they don't know what the they don't know what all happened. Which one, which person can I trust? I know I can't trust either one of them. Because I'm not going to slight one and, and keep the other one. So I gotta I gotta slight them both. I know I'm supposed to be talking about the swirlers, right? And the bad black women. I know. I know. I'm, I'm getting back to that. The point is the dysfunctional relationships that we have. We have dysfunctional relationships and we're not learning how to how to how to have functional relationships. Because we think functional relationships, that's white. Having functional relationships is, is white. I remember when you had good grades, I'm just being honest. And y'all tell me if I'm wrong. I was when I was in school. If you got really good grades, you know what they say? You you acting white. You act like a white person. What? Because I'm reading the book that the lady gave us. Yeah, you white. You act like you white. Craziest shit I ever heard. Craziest I ever heard. You white. Now. You got to take one of our children and you got to, now this child got to prove that they black by doing a bunch of dumb, dumber shit. See how we, see how we are just, we are, we are set up for failure. We set ourselves up for failure because we're not recognizing the war. Like brother D said, it's a war going on out here, but we're not recognizing what's going on. We, we're walking around with our eyes closed like this, and we don't want to see what's in front of us. The reality of the situation. A lot of black women, man, they just don't want to see it. So it's easier for them to say, I'm going to divest. Like, you're going to hurt us. You ain't going to hurt us. What you're really going to do is you're going to help us. Those of you that want to divest, go on and divest. We'll get rid of you. You'll be the white man's problem now. You'll be whoever else you want to be with. You'll be their problem now. You'll be their problem. And you think they're going to listen to you. But most of them, because you're taking the problem with you over there, they're just going to flip you just like you were getting flipped over here. The black woman has to be retaught, retrained how to be a woman of God and a woman that can bring uh, 
can bring a family into a, a higher level. She has to be retrained. You got to retrain her. Right now, the black woman's eyes get big when she see money. Her eyes should get big because she see a good man. Like the Bible said, a well-built man. Not just well-built physically, but he well-built spiritually. But the average black woman wouldn't know a good man if he walked up to her and kicked her over. Right? They don't understand that, no, it's not you. That you need to be what this man needs. But most women, they they have so much live germ in them. And when I say live germ, I talk about sperm. They have so much, so much men's sperm in them. They're so masculine that they feel like a man's supposed to come and be running behind her like Minnie Mouse. I got money like Oprah. I got money. You see, men are not going to be running behind you. I don't care how much money you got, like Minnie Mouse. And if he is, trust and believe he is going to be doing something somewhere when you're not around. Because men don't respect money and status like that. They just don't. Men, men respect a whole nother game. Well, good men. There's some men that don't respect nothing, man. They don't have no code of ethics or honor or, or no behavioral codes or nothing. They're going to just do whatever. But most men, the average black man has at least a code that they try to follow. Maybe they don't follow it all the time. Maybe they don't follow it every, you know, but they got at least a code that they try to follow. There's some dudes out here, but these women are picking Dudes that ain't got no codes or nothing because they're exciting. And then when they get used and abused, uh, you know, bumped and dumped, pumped and dumped, bagged and tagged, they blame the rest of us. Ain't no good black men. I just showed you the stat. 85% of black women, 85% of black men are married to black women. 80, 93% of black women are married to black men. 93%. 93%. That is from the U.S. Bureau of Statistics, Census Bureau. So then can't nobody say, oh, you just put that out your No. That's from the Census Bureau. That's from the Census Bureau. So black men are the Black men are the ones stepping up to marry black women. Black men are the ones stepping up to marry black women. Ain't nobody else stepping up. 93%? Ain't nobody else stepping up to marry black women. Not at no 93%. I'm not saying ain't nobody at all marrying black women. But please, the, the, the other people are at such a low percentage. Ain't even worth mentioning. How do you how do you identify a good black man, black woman? Since you since you can't find them and you got to go swirling or you got to just be a degenerate, how can you? Let me help you find a good black dude. A good black dude has character. What is character? Character means he has a code of conduct that he is, tries to adhere to at all times. I'm not saying he don't fall back every now and then or fall off every now and then, but he has a code of conduct and he knows when he fell off, he's like, man, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. Right? But, uh, you know, Pookie and Ray Ray down here at Venice Beach drinking 40s by the basketball court, all they know is they, when they was in the when they was in the jailhouse, it was in the belly of the beast. They lift the weights and got buff. So that's what you're looking at. This dude is buff, but he ain't got no character. He ain't got no. He ain't got the kind of character it takes to be in a marriage. See, women, you, just like I told the kings last night. Shout out to the kings. 
the four horsemen. Just like I told them, I'm telling you. I told them last night, you need when you out there looking for a woman, you need to be looking for what you want in a wife. Because you never know what may happen. You may have a sexual experience with this person and fall in love with them after your souls connect. It may happen. It's happened. You didn't intend on it happen like that. How many men, how many men are with a woman right now where you thought you were just gonna jump off of her and you ended you married with children and everything? It can happen. So you might as well try and find a woman that you can have um that you can have uh uh, uh, uh that you have you can see uh, as a wife. So I told them, hey, y'all need to look for women that have stuff, qualities of a wife. Well, I'm telling black women now, these swirlers and the bad black women, y'all need to look for what you want in a husband. But see, you wait until you get over to the white side of town, and then you start looking for what you want in a husband. Black dudes, you don't even give them a the chance. You just ready to go deal with these pookies and ray rays, and then you say, oh, it's all of y'all. All black men, I'm going to go jump the ship. Go on and jump. I say go on and jump the ship because I ain't no hater. I think if the swirlers, the spite swirlers, and the bad black women, if y'all, if, if all of y'all would just go away, there wouldn't be nothing left on the table but the good black women. And then now we can start educating our young men. This is how you treat a woman. This is how you treat a woman. Because we won't have nobody over here with their ass hanging out with their breasts hanging out, y'all be all over there, and we'll have decent black women where we can send our son. I got three sons. Who? How am I going to send them to go be with somebody out there, man? I, I got to tell them every day. Protect yourself. Watch who you with. Watch what you doing out here. And they grown. My baby boy is 19 years old. I got in college. I got. I got to tell him, "Hey, man, watch what you're doing out here. Watch it, because these women play games. These women play games out here. You really want to be with a woman? You really want to be uh, with a woman? Don't be with a woman just for sex. Uh oh, brother Clarence, here we go again, man. You, you talking crazy again, man? Talking crazy again. I know I'm just telling you the truth. I know y'all, most of y'all ain't going to listen to nothing I'm saying. You're not going to listen to me, what I'm saying. But I'm just going to tell you the truth. That way you ain't going to be able to say what well, nobody told me. Nobody told me. Nobody said nothing. I told you. I told you. Don't be all about the sex. Be about the character of the person. If you all about the sex with a woman, bro. That might not make it. That might not make it. A lot of these women have a lot of penises under their belt. A lot. You think you you think you teaching her something? How many times have you guys been with somebody and said, "Uh, I ain't never done this before. This is my first time." <laughs> like, damn, you're pretty good for a first timer, right? <laughs> You never know with a woman. You never know with a woman. Some of them are very shrewd. Most of them are not shrewd. Most of them have so much men's DNA in them, they cannot be shrewd. But a lot of them are shrewd. And they can they can really make you think that they are very in inexperienced when in actuality they are very experienced. And the last thing you want to do is get with somebody who's very experienced sexually. Uh, as a woman, as a man, as a man, you you don't want a woman that's very experienced sexually. If you do, the reason why, 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 brother Clarence, why is that a bad situation? Men have a lot of experience, yeah, but for men, it's different. For men, it's different. A lot of experience for a man that ain't really nothing to him most of the time. Yeah, this soul's gonna intertwine, but most of the time. The man is gonna his soul is gonna let the other person's soul go unless she really means something to him. 
It's the woman that's going to try to hold on. But when you have a woman that has a lot of a lot of sexual activity, it's hard to please a woman like that. It's hard. A woman like that is going to always be grading you based on the last enjoyable time she had. And if you don't, what if you don't cut the mustard? How long is she going to, how long is she going to take getting less than? That's the problem we got out right now. That's why so many black women out there right now, single, is because they had so much fun in college. They marry a guy and then they realize this guy ain't sexually as astute as the other dude or built sexually like the other dude, the, the dude from college. And so they say, you know, I can find better. So they leave a good relationship. They leave a good man, a good marriage, and they leave it because they figure, hey, I can, I can find a better sex somewhere else. And you can. There's always somebody willing to do what you want, brother, sexually. There's always someone, somebody willing to do what you want. A lot of you guys be like, well, you got to have a lot of money. You don't. You don't. Take it from the old man. You don't. You don't. All you have to do is have a certain amount of confidence about yourself. Yes, most women probably will say no. But there are some that will say yes. You catch them at the right time. I remember I was watching this story. I was watching this uh, this uh, show used to come on called Third Watch. And uh, it was about these ambulance drivers. And uh, they, they he they came to this hospital, brought a patient in, and one of the uh, ambulance drivers was all on this nurse. And the nurse was like, I got a boyfriend. Leave me alone. I can't stand you. Uh, the whole show, he kept, every time he came to the hospital, he was all over. Finally, he just said, all right. So the last time he went to the hospital, right before the show was about to go off, he went to the hospital. He saw her. All he did was wave at her. She grabbed them, pulled them in a patient room, and did them in the patient room. And then he found out later that she had just her, found her boyfriend cheating. So it's just revenge sex. Right? But the point is, you never know what's going on, man. You never know what's going on. So you need to be ready for everything. You never know what's going on. A lot of these women, man, they, they're out here and they just don't. And see, People say, oh, well, you had all these different men. Okay, you had all these different men. See, I got a solution for you, a full body cellular cleanse. That's the solution. You need a fast and you need a full body cleanse. When you have a full, when you do those two things, you can actually become a virgin again because you've given yourself time to get rid of all of those memories of other men out of your head, get that, uh, that DNA out of your system, and it's going to not register in your head anymore. And it's not going to connect with the water in your brain that remembers that anymore. And it's going to dissolve after a while. But if you keep, if you don't, if you don't never get rid of that DNA, it's confusion. Why do you think so many women are always so confused all the time? They always got so many different um, health issues. Why? Because you got men DNA trying to replicate itself in your body. <laughs> it's trying to connect with the bone marrow to try to re it's, it's asking for testosterone. It's putting signals in your body that saying your body is saying, what we got going on today? Oh, we got we got male DNA in our system. We must need to release some testosterone. The body don't say, oh. We ain't supposed to have men. Whatever you got in your system, they're going to try to accommodate. We, oh, well, we must need to release some testosterone. Let's let's hold it there and let's release some testosterone. So now you got all this testosterone. They're telling you, oh, you're getting it from eating McDonald's hamburgers. No, 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 no. You're getting this testosterone from having all of this sex with all these different men and letting them leave their essence in you. That's where you're getting the testosterone from. Brother Clarence, Brother Clarence, 
See, you just talking, man. You just talking. You don't know. You, you ain't no doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm a mathematician. I'm a mathematician. I just do the math. I went to school to be an engineer. I, I, I just do the math. So if the math is there, the math is there. Now, the question is, are you going to step up here and disprove me? Who is going to come and say, brother, I disproved you? Step up on that challenge. Or any of the, any of the people that's following Mahogany Pink. Now, I'm not talking to my hardcore, my hardcore uh, soldiers. I'm not talking about my hardcore. I'm talking about the people that's watching this. Even on the replay. Even on the replay, you make a video about this, and then you tag me in and you call me over. I ain't got no problem because it's not Brother Clarence's truth. It is the truth. I ain't, it ain't my truth. That's like me saying I own two plus two. I don't own two plus two. That's just the truth. I don't own this truth. This is just the truth. You're running around here, black women. 59% of y'all are more likely to be single. Think about that. You can't blame black men for everything. You can't say, oh, well, it's y'all. Y'all just don't want to y'all just don't want to do right. We don't. We don't want to stand in these relationships that should be falling apart. Why? We don't want paying, we don't want with, with our children paying alimony. We paying child support. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we paying child support. We we the ones paying our child support. And a child lives with us. But you know what we say to ourselves? Hey, if, if I gotta pay child support to this crazy bride, just so she won't, just so she won't mess up the living arrangement that I got that I got my child here, F it, I'll do it. We're the ones making those sacrifices. We're the ones making those sacrifices. I know lead attorney and other kind of guys, they can't understand that. They can't understand that. Bro. Let me tell you guys something, man, and single guys like that. There is nothing, there is nothing like being a dad, turning all the lights off in your house and counting all the heads and seeing all the heads there. Your wife is there. Your children are all in their beds. That's the best feeling. That is, that is God saying, job well done. Job well done today. Let's try and do the same thing tomorrow. Ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like it. That's your thank you, bro. Because on Father's Day, it's hardly nothing. Every night, they may do something. But most likely, no. Mother's Day, they'll do stuff. Because I would make mine do stuff. Do You got to do stuff for her. But for me, just leave me alone. Go somewhere. Let me watch TV by myself. <laughs> but you don't get no thank yous as a father. Not too many times. You don't get too many thank yous. Maybe college graduation. Maybe, maybe something down the road. But you don't get too many thank yous. Ain't a lot of thank yous in this business. So you got to recognize the thank yous when you see them. You go home and you go and you turn all the lights off. You lock your house up. You secure your house and you turn off all your lights and then you go count heads and every head is where it's supposed to be. Job well done. Job well done. Oh, but I had to pay. You got to pay this other person even though the child is with me. So what? I would do the same. I would do the same. I know TLA went off on a dude one time. And that's my dude. TLA was my dude. But he don't have no children, so he don't understand. Sometimes you got to make it. Sometimes you got to do some stuff you don't really want to do for the sacrifice you got to make for the child. Because you want to count those heads. You want to make sure your child is safe. And if being with you is making the child safer, then, hey, I got to pay this money to this person. Even though she should be paying me. 
She should be paying me, right? I got a situation now where, where my granddaughter lives with me most of the time. Mother, her mother spends a little bit of time with her, but she lives with me most of the time. When I say me, I mean me, my 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 oldest boy. He don't live too far, so she spends a lot of time with me, right? She'll she'll spend a night a lot of times. She has dinner, has her all her meals there, plays there, whatever, right? But you know who's you know who's getting tax money? Who's writing her off on the taxes? They are. The mother is writing tax. The mother's getting stimulus money for her. But you know what? Because we got it the most time, I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing. Because it ain't worth the money you're going to spend on lawyers and all that to try to get that to, to un, un, tie that knot. F it. Let them have it. Spend a lot of time with my granddaughter. A lot. Most of the most of every week with her. That's okay. But see, those are the thank yous. I'm trying to show you as a father how you recognize thank yous. The thank you is when you see all your children in their beds. The thank you is when you see all your children or you watch one of your children who was sick recover and come back to him or herself. Those are the thank yous. When you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning because you hear them coughing and you got to go all the way to the drugstore and you get what they need and then you see them recover in a couple of days. They ain't, no, ain't nobody going to say, thank you, Dad, for doing this. Don't, don't, don't nobody say that. You, you're not going to hear it in English. You're going to hear it in spirit when you see them get over it. So don't be like all tripped out. Oh, well, lead attorney said, I, you know, I, don't don't get tripped on that. Don't get don't tripped on that. No offense to my boy, the lead attorney. But like he even said, I don't have children, so I understand some of these things. He even said that. You got to go with what your spiritually is right for you. Spiritually. Let's get back to these black women. <laughs> Brother Clarence, you went on another tangent. I can't even blame Brother D. Brother D would be here. He, I could say, well, Brother D took me off on another tangent. I can't even blame I can't blame you, Brother D. I can't blame you right now. I can't blame Brother Jarvis. I can't blame nobody. It's me. I, I took myself off the program. Let's get back to these spite swirlers. What is the end result of the spite swirling? How is that going to work out? If you spite swirling, meaning you swirling out of spite, meaning the reason why you swirling is not, and see, let me let me give y'all the difference between swirling and spite swirling. Regular swirling is when you say, hey, I'm open to whoever's going to treat me right, regardless of race. That's swirling. Okay, I, I get that. I can, I can dig that. I would rather you be with a black dude, but I, I can dig that, man. If you've been hurt enough where well, you say, hey, it's not that I'm cutting off the brothers, but I'm opening the door for anybody. Anybody, I, I'm opening the door for somebody. To me, when you have the swirler type mentality, to me, it's what, what you're actually saying is, I can't trust my own judgment. I don't know what a good black man looks like. And so I, cause I keep picking bad ones thinking I'm picking good ones. So I don't know what I'm doing. So to protect myself, I need to just go with another race altogether. Forget the black dudes, right? To me, that's the spite swirler where, because I've been done so wrong by bad black men that I picked, you picked this bad black men, you picked them, but because They've been so bad and they treated you so horrible. You say, I'm going to go swirl out of spite. I'm going to go be with black. I'm going to be with white boys exclusively or whoever. I'm, I'm exclusively not dating black men. And for some reason, when they say stuff like that, they think, oh, black men, we're going to get we going to get nervous. How are we going to get nervous when it's 16 to 1? The one or two of y'all that go do that, 
How are we going to get mad? And then they're going to, they really run over you guys over there. Because you you think, oh, I I had a bad attitude. I, I was not my not my right weight. I was not uh, a good to this man. I'm going to take all of these uh, attributes and take them all across the fence. And some kind of way, there's a white boy that's going to be like, yeah, just because you black and you're a novelty over here, I'm going to put up with all of this stuff. The white boys are much smarter than that. Them, see, you think these white boys are stupid. They're not stupid. Okay, they're going to let you come over there, but trust me, they're going to keep you in the hotel room. They're going to flip you in a hotel room, keep you in a hotel room, most of them. You know what I'm saying? Man, maybe, one in, maybe one in 400 or 500 might marry you, might be in a relationship with you. But the overwhelming majority of them, they ain't trying to get no relationship with no black woman. Why? Let's get down to the mathematics of why. Why do you think that what most white men avoid black women in relationships and marriage? Because they know if they be with black women, that that is going to, that's not going to preserve their bloodline. It's not going to preserve it. Because the dominant is over the recessive. White, light skin is recessive. Dark skin is dominant. They know that their gene pool is going to be dominated. And they, you cannot blame white people for wanting to preserve themselves. You just cannot blame them for that. The white woman been down with that forever. Not forever, but at least the last 6,000 years. She's been down with that. She know. Where she go? Where's the white woman going to go? Who else is ruthless enough to do the stuff that the average Caucasian guy will do to make to maintain order? They know that ain't nobody that ruthless. They got to stay where they're at. So I don't see how these black women think they're going to inch their way in there, but but they will let you come over there and be jump offs. And that's what you're going to be reduced to over there. A lot of times. A lot of times. Maybe a, you know, maybe a couple of white dudes that want to actually be in a relationship with you. and uh, but, but the majority of them, they know better than that. They talk better than that. They'll tell them, hey, man, you mess with a black girl, you mess with that black chick, don't get her pregnant, and don't bring her here. They'll tell them. And you know what? Can't blame them. I can't blame them. Because white people know, hey, you got to have sex with another white person to make another white person. Two white people have to have sex with each other to make another white person. That's the only way you're going to get there. They know if they have sex with a black person, the dominant genes of the black person is going to overtake the uh, white person's gene, the recessive genes of the white person. Now, that's the mathematics of it. I'm not saying white people are evil or nothing like that. They just want to preserve themselves. I mean, just like we want to preserve ourselves. But because God taught us directly and we was we was his firstborn, we got dominant genes. Doesn't matter who we have sex with. The dominance is going to, we, the dominant is going to take over the recessive. Period. The end. That's just the math of the situation. So how are you going to get around that black woman? Super swirlers, spite swirlers, bad black women. And here, what about bad black women? Bad black women. You got a bad attitude. You like Lizzo. Lizzo has this attitude where you can kiss my ass. And I understand, man. It's frustrating trying to be the way you want to be and people always giving you feedback about it. I, it's frustrating. I'm talking about for Lizzo. It'd be frustrating. See, all of us judge Lizzo. We judge her. Oh, man, she she just bad for, you know, say, uh, man, hey, you try being a big, huge star and having people always throwing rocks at you. See if you don't get frustrated. 
See if you don't have an issue every now and then. See if you don't have a breakdown every now and then. You see these black women, man, they have problems, man. They have breakdowns. Why? Why? Because the reality sets into them. They'll go out and start dating these white boys, and then the white boys just flip them and flip them and flip them and flip them and flip them. And, flip them. and then when they start talking about getting serious, the white boys are so slick, man, they know how to get out of it. They know how to get out of it. They don't bumble and stumble, and they just say, hey, look, I was just here to do X, Y, Z. They straight out with them. While you out here trying to pretend like you really want to be, and I'm talking about you, I'm talking about the average black woman, black man out here on the street. You out here fumbling and bumbling, trying to act like you still with the program. You know you don't want to be married or no long-term relationship either with this lady. At least the white boy is honest, respects her enough to be honest with her. Hey, I just wanted to roll in the hay with you. When she started trying to be more than just, you know, a roll in the hay, White boy, you sit her down and let her know. No, no, sweetheart, you just a jump off. My mama would kill me if I brought you to the house. And my father would have a heart attack. I cannot do that to my parents. I cannot. But even then, bad black women, how are you, how are you thinking you're going to go take those bad behaviors over to the white boys and the white boys are going to praise you for that? In some kind of way, the white boys are going to look at that as those are good things. Those are good attributes. How does that work? <laughs> how, is that, how is that supposed to work? I don't, I don't get how, you know, the white boys are supposed to, all of a sudden, black men, we, we ain't, oh, I know, we can't handle you. We can't handle you. You know, I got to give Tommy Sotomayor some credit, man. I remember Tommy saw it a long time ago. He said, you you handle, you know, you handle gasoline, dangerous objects. You handle snakes. You handle alligators. You handle sharks. Why do black women always say, you, don't, you can't handle me? You handle dangerous substances. It's not that we can't handle you. It's that we don't want to be bothered with all of that drama. And because we don't want to be bothered with all that drama, we can't handle you. Oh, the white boy can handle you? Oh, well, go ahead on. Oh, you said, I'm going to be, what about this one? I'm going to be feminine if you, if you do X, Y, Z, then I'll be feminine. You think the white boys are going to put up with that? Go on over there. Take that over there to them. They're going to play you right into a hotel room, flip you and flip you on the hotel room about three or four times before you finally realize, hey, you know what? This man never take me to go eat nothing. He bring the food in here. He, we don't never do nothing. Together, out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking to you right now, sitting on that hotel room bed. Yeah, you. Talking to you right now in that car, fixing your dress. Yeah, you. Talking to you right now, coming out of that motel room. You. Getting flipped. You. What's this, the third, second, third time you getting flipped? Now you finally realizing, this dude ain't going to do nothing with me but flip me. But you ain't got the balls to come back and say, you know what, y'all was right. So you're going to go out and find another white boy, right? And let him flip you and flip you and flip you and flip you and flip you. Maybe I'll find one. See, the most lenient man on the planet when it comes to women, it's the black man. We're the most lenient men. We will take a man, we will take a woman with another person's children. Think about that for just a minute. We will take a, a, a woman with another man's children. If she presents herself in the right manner, we will take a woman with another man's children. 
That is absolutely in the animal kingdom that's unheard of. That's unheard of in the animal kingdom. Most men in the animal kingdom do not do that. They don't raise other men's children. You know what a lion does when he comes into, when, when he takes over a pride? The first thing he does is go kill all the cubs of the other lion that he, he beat up or killed. First thing he does is go kill those cubs. That's why when 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 every when 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 those uh a woman that has a really young cub, a, a, a lioness with a really young cub, when they see that they see that the, their dude is losing, the father of that cub is losing, out they 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 will roll. Cause they she know what's gonna happen to them cubs. She know. Every once in a while, I'm one of those lionesses will be smart enough to say, I'm out. He ain't going to get to my cubs. Because the first thing he going to do is sniff them cubs. He smell that other lion on them cubs. Gone. But that's most males in the animal kingdom. They're not going to raise another man's children. Right? But the black man is so forgiving. I forgive you for giving your vagina to someone else. And now you're trying to give it to me. I forgive you for that. I forgive you. I forgive you. Because you're the woman of God. And you can be reborn. You can be remade. You can be redeemed. What is redeemed? What is redeemed? What the word re means again. Again, so at first she was deemed worthy of a relationship, but you got involved with all this other drama. Now we have to redeem you relate ready for a relationship. We have to redeem you. Make you ready for a relationship again. How do we make you re ready for a relationship again? We got to reteach you. You ain't never been taught, black woman, not if you... Older than, uh, let's say, you born after 1970, you ain't really been taught what a relationship is about and the sacrifices that go into it. Hmm? We got to redeem you. We got to redeem you. You out here. How? How do we redeem you? Well, let's get back to the black man being forgiven. The black man is the most forgiven. I forgive you for having given your vagina to someone else. I forgive you for bringing these children that aren't mine into this relationship. I forgive you for that. I forgive you for weighing other than yourself. I forgive you for that. I forgive you for going and buying and putting someone else's hair in your head. I forgive you for that. Can you imagine? Let me show you what a weave looks like to us, sisters. Let me let me let me try to make it so you can see what that looks like to us. You got a different, whole different grade of hair in your head, a hair of a whole nother woman, right? That'd be like me. I had some big old buff arms, but they was white. They was white arms. You'd be like, that's crazy. His arms is white, like off a white person, like off a white man. And I was walking around like, yeah, I'm, you know, yeah, I'm the shit. I got these white buff arms. I'm the shit. You be looking at me like I'm crazy. That's what y'all look like to us. That's what y'all look like to us with all of these other people's hair in your head. Accept your own and be yourself. Accept your own and be yourself. But we forgive you for that. We forgive your mouth. You got the mouth. You got the mouth of a a drunken sailor on a Saturday night. A lot of you. But we forgive you. We forgive you for that. We try to work with you. You don't cook. We forgive you for that. You know how to. You don't have. You never learned how to keep a house 
on a on a on a schedule of cleanliness. We forgive you for that. We are black men. We are the ones taking you in with all of this drama going on. We are. And I know a lot of black women, they're not like that. So I'm not talking to the vast majority of black women. I'm not talking about the, the a lot of black a lot of black women are good, decent women. Whether they learn how to do it late or they learn early, they learned. You have to be able to put yourself, package yourself in a way where men looks at you and says, damn, I cannot let that woman go. Not because he's looking at your body, but he's looking at the total package. He's looking at the total package. I don't want you to be, I don't want no black woman single. I don't. But you got to, you got to do some work. You got to put some work in. You can't expect to be a bad person and then expect other people to just, oh, they're just going to do the work. No. You want a good man? You're going to have to do some work. And I don't like, I mean, you know, Kevin Samuels don't know everything, but he hits the he hits the nail on a lot of stuff. I'm not saying he's a genius. He's just telling you what's already out there in the atmosphere. How you going how are you going to be with somebody who and you ain't willing to do the work? Y'all want a man that's making a ton of money and that's do, and you want him to accept you for being a bad person. Nobody who wants a bad person in their household. He just gonna have to accept me just the way I am. Who's gonna want that? A man's gonna only want to accept you the way you are if you're the way he wants you to be. But if you're not like that and you try to play the role, how long are you been how long are you gonna be able to play the role? How long are you gonna be able to play like, oh, I'm with the, I'm, I'm with the business. Are you really? Are you really? Who you going who you going uh who you going to blame? When the, when the thing goes underground, who you going to blame? See, don't be a bad black woman. Don't be a bad black woman. When I say, what's a bad black woman? A bad black woman is a woman that doesn't know herself and doesn't want to improve. We're all in a bad place at some point or time or other. We're all in a, in a bad place at some point or other. None of us are perfect. But a good black woman can at least have the humility to say, maybe this dude is right. Maybe I need to change. Maybe our relationship will be better if I change. But bad black women don't feel like they need to change. They feel like manipulation is the um, grease to make a relationship work is manipulation. So that's what they use. They constantly manipulation, shaming, all kind of different ways of manipulation tactics to try to get a man to do what she wanted to do instead of being a instead of being a good person that the man would just automatically want to do what she says she what he what she. If it's good, if it's good for the family. You think, man, you think these white boys going to take you in with all these bad habits? Really? And they're going to revere you? Just because you're shaking your ass on Instagram? You got a you got 100,000 followers on Instagram and can't get one dude to take you out on a decent date. Why? Because you have already presented yourself to the world as a jump off. And then you're like, I can't find no good dudes. What good dude is going to want to be with you when you presented yourself as a jump off? He already know I only got X amount of dollars, but you presented yourself like whoever I'm going to, I'm going to be with the highest bidder. So he know already there's always going to be a higher bidder. There's always going to be a higher bidder. There's always going to be somebody with more money. There's always going to be somebody with more status. There's always going to be somebody with a better car. But there ain't going to always be somebody with a good fit character-wise for you. I met some good people. I met some. I've been blessed, man. I've met some really good women. 
but they weren't a good fit for me. They weren't a good fit for me. I finally met a woman that was a better fit for me. Just because you find somebody and they got all of these bells and whistles that you won't, don't mean that's the good part. The, the, I'm telling you, the character is so important in a person. The character is so important, especially in a man. A character is so important in a man. You need to see what this man is about. What is he about? What does he think about? What does he spend most of his time thinking about? What is his dreams? What is his goals? What is his desires? Because his desires is what's going to drive him. But if you make him ashamed of saying, talking about his desires, he'll never talk to you about his desires and he'll chase them behind your back. But see, you don't know. As a bad black woman, you don't know. A bad black woman, they they feel like they have to be the boss of the relationship. What do I mean by the boss of the relationship? They try to control what the man think, what him, what he wearing, what he. They try to control his time. They try to control. They, and they try to isolate you from your family. This is also what narcissistic people do. They try to isolate you from anybody who would try to tell you that they are doing something wrong, what the situation is not right. They try to isolate you. You know I love y'all because I'm in here in the dark. I'm in here in the dark teaching. But they try to isolate you. They try to isolate you from your friends and your family. You got friends out there that say, man, what, what, wait a minute. What you talking about? You can't go play basketball. I can't go. Why? What do you mean you can't go? Well, I mean, I got to... What you mean you can't go? You you mean you're not going to go, right? No, I mean, I can't go. If I go, then she going to leave. What? That's crazy. And then the ultimate one is your mama. Your mama going to say, what? Son, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I got to. I love her. Son, you you know. But after a while, so, so, so you be dumb and you go to her and say, my mama said, I need to not let you do that to me. What? We don't need to go down to your mama's house no more then. We don't need to go down there no more. Now they rip you away from your mama. They rip you away from your aunts. They rip you away from all the women that could tell you. And then your friends. I don't want this person calling here no more. I don't want this person calling here no more. They can't, you, they can't call on our phone. Here you are paying the phone bill. And they're telling you who can call and come over your house. That's bad black women. And then a lot of times they just dating you. They ain't even married to you telling you that. They dating you, telling you who can contact you and who can't contact you. I could see them saying, hey, you know what? I'm not comfortable with you staying in touch with your exes. If you're gonna date me, then I'm gonna have to ask you. That's a whole different conversation than you can't talk to your mama. That's a whole nother conversation. Cause some women will go some women will tell you the same thing. Some women will say, Hey, you know, I know you're close to your ex and everything, but that's very uncomfortable when I hear you talking to them. So I think if you don't have, you know, no major business or assets with that person, you need to let to cut them loose because I'm here. And if you want me to stay in a situation, then you know, I need you to that's a whole different, I can respect that. I mean, I like it because this person may be close to me, but I have to respect the new relationship I'm in. If the new person say, hey, that old person is not the person on deck anymore, but you but you giving them my time, I have to respect that. But when they say, hey, don't talk to your mom, your mama can't come over here no more. What? What you mean my mama can't come over here no more? No, your mama can't come over here. Your friends can't come over here. Nobody can come over here. And pretty soon, before you know you learn to turn around, only her people are coming over there, right? <laughs> only her people are coming over there. You're like, what happened? Then you see a friend of yours, you lose touch with all your friends, right? You see a friend of yours later on, you go, man, what happened to you? He go, what happened to you, man? I don't know, man. I don't know. That's what happens when you get caught up with black, bad black women, man. There's good black women out there, but there's bad ones too. There's bad ones. 
and we need to clear the deck, man. Bad black women, man, you want to go over here and hop the fence, have at it. Have at it. None of us are trying to hold you back. None of us are trying to keep you. None of us are trying to have you in the <laughs> nothing. We want you to be happy. And, and if you want to take all of those, all that drama over to the white boys, have at it. No offense, white boys. No, no offense to our white friends. But hey, they want you. If y'all want them, knock yourselves out. We only want the cream of the of the top. We want we want the cream of the bunch. We don't want the bottom of the barrel no more. And if the bottom of the barrel is telling us, hey, we gonna go over here to the white boys. So ha 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 ha, shit ha 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 ha, go on and go. You be clearing the deck. Now our young brothers don't have to even deal with the bad black women and the spice whirlers because they gone. They'll be getting flipped on and unfortunately they're going to get dealt with and they'll learn they'll learn the, the reality of the situation oh, swirling, uh, spice whirling and uh, being a bad black woman. What y'all think? Am I crazy? I mean, I'm trying to help black women, man. I've been I've been on a campaign to try to help black women turn around so that most of our there will be more black women out there that are that the good brothers will have to choose from. That's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to help them see that. But they but as y'all see from most of my videos, I got another video coming out tomorrow about a response I got from my uh, delu educated delusionists. I call them educated delusionists. They got all this education. But, and they still delusional. They got all this education and they can't figure out how to how to be in a relationship with a man, a functional relationship with a man. I got this degree, I got that degree, I got this degree, I got that degree. Who you crawling to bed with? My cats? Oh. Oh. Why come? Because all black men, because black men ain't no good. Oh. Oh. All black men ain't no good? Yep. Oh, okay, okay. They just delusional. And the I was teaching one the same thing that I'm teaching. I'm about to go into now. They talk a good game, but see now this is what you're gonna have to walk. With. Spice whirlers, listen to me. Bad black women, listen to me, because this is when you really see. I told you. Black men, we the most forgiving. Even when you splat up against, even when you hit the wall, we will still forgive you for hitting the wall. See, the white boys don't play that. They don't play that. When you hit that wall, they done with you. They, for the most part, they done with you. Culturally speaking, yeah, man, well, every, once in a, once in, every once in a while, one might still stay with you. But when you hit that wall, bro, White boys do not play that hitting the wall situation. They don't even play that being other way and other than yourself situation. They don't play that. They got very strict standards. So my question is, how do you think you're going to sp spite swirl or be a bad black woman and divest when they got harsher standards than we do? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. But I guess if you're going to be a lifetime jump off, Cool, cool. I thought you was trying to get married. If you're not trying to get married, no problem. Go over there and rack up as many penises as you can. Get 100,000 miles on your vagina. A-OK, -okay, great. Turn about 55, 60 years old, start hoarding, and uh, get ready for the old folks home, right? Ain't nothing sadder than an old black woman. I mean, not old black women. Take that back, because a lot of black women they still are looking right even in their old age. But the sad, it, nothing sadder than a woman with no body that wants to be with her. That's sad. That's sad. But a lot of times they think, "Oh, I got money, so I'm okay." Okay, well, you okay? 
But money ain't the security of having a man in your life. A man provides security, direction, protection, God's love for you, so many different things. Why you think the why you think the man is in your life? Why you think the man came your way? Right? We all heard the old uh saying uh, the old uh poem or whatever it is where boat man man took a trip on a boat. He went out on the boat and uh they uh, they got way out into the middle of the ocean. They said, "Hey, the boat is sinking. Boat is sinking." And they said, "Abandon ship, abandon ship." And the man that went on the trip said, I'm not going to abandon the ship because God is going to come and save me. A boat came later on. All of the guys abandoned the ship. A boat came later on, and they said, hey, jump in. Your ship is going down. The man said, no, God is going to save me. I'm going to stay right here till God comes and gets me. Okay, so the dude said, okay, he left. A little while later, another ship comes. He says, hey, another little boat comes. He said, hey, get in. Your, your boat is about to sink. The man said, no, I trust God. I believe in God. God is going to come and save me. That boat left. Finally, a third boat comes. The man is just about to go under the water. He said, hey, get in this boat now. He goes, no, I'm not going to get in that boat. God is going to save me. I believe in God. God is going to save me. The man said, you sure? He said, I'm sure. Cool. So he left. The man on the boat that's going down ends up drowning to death. He goes to heaven. God, why you didn't save me on that boat? You saw that boat was going down. Why, why you didn't save me? God said, who you think sent them three guys to come and talk to you? Who you think sent them guys? See, but we don't recognize God's intervention. We don't recognize God's intervention. God is intervening with you, giving you a good man, but you calling him a lame. You calling him a lame or a square because you got all these followers on Instagram. I got all these followers on Instagram. I got all these followers on Facebook. Right? So the, your wing is high. Right? Like the Quran said, lower your wing. Lower your wing. You ain't as special as you think you are. Lower your wing. But your wings are high because you think, man, I'm 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 made of fire. These dudes is made of dust. But see that that wall is coming. The wall is coming. The wall is coming. I'm just having a fireside chat with y'all, but the wall is coming. I don't care if you're a good woman or a spice water or black, bad black woman. The wall is coming. But good women understand that and they prepare for it. They prepare for it. How do they prepare for it? They lay the foundation. They show a man that they are God's mercy to them by their behavior, their attitude. They show this to the man. So the man don't when that when they hit the wall, the man don't see that they hit the wall. He still see that twenty year old girl. But a bad black woman, man, you mistreated everybody so much. When you hit that wall, bam, everybody see it, and ain't nobody scared to tell you. That's why black women are so appalled at the Kevin Samuels show because Kevin Samuels will tell you up front. Because now, ain't nobody scared to tell you. See, when you get to a certain point, after you've been doing black men so bad for so long, now there's a place where people, where black men can tell you straight out, you have hit the wall. Your sexual market value has dropped dramatically. You are not able to compete. But see, nobody's telling you that you can't compete. Except now Kim Samuels and others are telling you can't compete out there. Not straight up. You can't compete straight up. The only way you can compete is giving younger black women bad advice. 
and letting them rack up the penises, letting them rack up the mouths on the vagina, and giving, making them get a couple of dings on their sexual market value so now you can still compete. But your chances of getting men is still low because of your age. That's why you got to find a good man. When you find a good man and you connect with him and you show him God is in you, God's mercy is in you, then he don't see when you hit the wall. He don't see it. I got somebody in the group in, 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 the, uh, in the backstage, y'all. So I'm going to bring him up. The brother biracial brother. I'm going to bring you up, man. What's going on, my man? <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. See, that's the kind of stuff that 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 lets you know that you own something. When the devil attacks you, that lets you know you own something. That lets you know you own a something. So the dude did that and brought that up. That was cute. What y'all think about that? You think you're going to get me banned? You can try. I know one thing, biracial dude. You'll never bring your ass up here again. You'll never be, you bring your ass up here again. I don't care what you call yourself. So let me talk about that situation that just happened. Uh, hopefully y'all didn't have no children in the room. Y'all didn't see that. So I won't never do that again. I won't never let somebody up without knowing who they are first. I'm sorry. That was the first time I got trolled like that. But it's all good. It's all good. Biracial man. Biracial man, let me tell you something. God is going to get your ass for that one. You messing with God's people right here. You mess with God's word. God is going to tap that ass for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Maybe your mama got cancer. Maybe your ass will get cancer. Maybe all your whole family get cancer. And it wasn't me. It was you. You brought the shit on yourself. Because I never asked you to pop in doing that. But hey, I tell you what, I will be prepared for you next time. I'll be prepared. That was a good lesson for me. I apologize to all of you guys in the chat. I apologize to all of, all of you guys that are viewing. Hopefully they'll take that out. <laughs> what, what did you say, Sister G? The devil is always busy. That's what that was. Yeah, man. They, they caught me off guard, Sister G. I wasn't ready for that because I'm used to just my hard course. But I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to tell you like this, biracial man. Your ass is grass. When I get off of here, I'm going to pray a prayer that God will attack your family with cancer or whatever else. So now I'm hoping that my, I'm hoping that the mercy that I have in me, <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that the mercy that I have in me will slow me down. But if that, if God's mercy don't get to me, your ass is grass. Might not be today, might not be tomorrow, might not be this year, might not be next year. But trust me, you mess with God's people, God gonna get your ass. God gonna get your ass. So, uh, but let me see. Uh, he needs a North Philly ass kicking daily, all day on site. You know what, brother? I agree with you, Brother D, but guess what? I know you've read the Bible and you read the Quran. Nobody can put an ass kicking on you like God. Nobody can put an ass kicking on you like that. Like Jesus said, God put an ass kicking on you, man. You'll be asleep wishing you was awake, and you'll be awake wishing you was asleep, and you're going to never be, you're going to be tormented all the time. Okay. I, I mean, you know, I can't, I can't, uh, you know, I can't uh, be mad. You know, they're going to come for me. You know what that's saying, Brother D? That's saying we must be doing something right. Because if we wasn't doing something right, they wouldn't be coming for us. Right? They'll be leaving us alone. What are we doing? We ain't doing nothing but telling black, trying to put black men and black, good black men and good black women together. So we can have good families, so we can get these good black families to get into business together, so we can be business people together, so that we can start controlling these politicians, so that we can make things better for our people, right? That's all we're doing. But you're right. You're right. 
I wish I had him out here because I got several places I could take him to Compton that they would have, whew, talking about a ass kicking. I know there's a street right now I know in Compton, man. If you don't know nobody on that street and somebody drop you off, brother, you ain't coming out of there. The only way you coming out of there is in an ambulance. <laughs> but see, brother D, you know what, brother D, I try to be, I try to be, you know, a merciful brother because I did a lot of crazy stuff when I was younger, man. And so I try to be merciful. But one thing I never did, man, I never tried to mess with God's people. I never tried to mess with people that was trying to live by God's wisdom and mercy. I never tried to mess with them. Uh, Sister G, I'm thinking his anus would need a mercy repair, biracial or bisexual, whatever he is. Whatever he is, Sister G, you know what I'm saying? Let's let him go let him, and, and let's watch out for him. Y'all, we all going to watch out for him next time. If he come in, I'm, I know what he looked like, and we got his face right here on the um, what you call it, and Streamyard got him, so they gonna get him. I they know because if they listen to the uh, they they see the video, they gonna know. I had no idea that dude was gonna pull something like that. So uh, anyway, but whatever, you know what I'm saying. Like I said, you know, he's him, we us. He's proving our point that. You know, the world is in such sad situation. Why would you come here? There's so many different channels you could get on where you could do something like that, but you're coming on to something like here. We only got four people in here, but you're going to pull something like that in here. I guess it was just to see if you could do it, whatever. But you got it off, dude. I ain't going to, you got it off. But yo, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you, brother. It's really going to cost you. <laughs> Uh, and why you say you laugh? Why you laughing, brother Claire? Because I know if I if I call this God on you, your ass is grass. Your ass is grass. You gonna wish you gonna you gonna wish that brother D took you up to Philly and give you one of them Philly ass kickings. You gonna wish you got an ass kicking in Philly or New York ass kicking or Compton ass kicking. You gonna wish that. Or Liberty City ass kicking. You're going to wish. Or ATL ass kicking. You're going to wish. Because God get on that ass. God, God gets on that ass and don't let up. He don't let up at all. Anyway, y'all. That's enough. We gave that fool enough time. Talking about that fool. God is going to take care of him. The rest of the way. So I, I doubt we'll ever see him again. Anyway, anyway, back to our back to our show. Spite swirlers, black women, divestors, all of y'all. Help yourself. Those are the kind of guys you're gonna run into over there. <laughs> Those guys. They're gonna do stuff like that to you. Have at it. Have at it. The devil came over here. Why did the devil come over here? The devil came here because we teach it. If we wasn't teaching nothing, if we was in agreement with the devil, the devil would never have to come and show his face over here. Right? But because we teach it, the devil came over here to show his ass. That means this is important what we're talking about here. We, we're talking about something important. We're talking about what God wants us to talk about here. We ain't just entertaining you. we entertaining you, but we're giving you facts, and we're giving you relevance, and we're giving you knowledge and wisdom here. The devil came into my stream. I'm actually, you know what, y'all? I know y'all going to say this is crazy, right? But I'm actually proud of him that came in. That makes me feel like, man, I'm, we really doing something. We're really trying to do something because why would somebody like that come into our stream? Why would they? Why would they come into our stream? If we wasn't, if we wasn't teaching, if we wasn't teaching God's word, why would the devil come in and expose himself to us? 
Why would he? Think about that. Think about all the live streams that could be out that's out there right now. People on live stream, and the devil ain't over there in their spot. They over here. The devil's over here because he's that irritated by what we doing. Praise be to the one God in heaven, Allah. Anyway, back to the swirlers, the spice swirlers, and the bad black women and the divesters. Y'all need to go. Those are the type of guys you're going to be running into over there. You're not going to, the, the, the good black dude, let me tell you something about good white, the good white dude. The good white dudes, quote unquote, good white dudes, that's, you know, they want to wife up people and stuff. They insulated. You think, see, black women ain't chasing good black dudes. Only a few good, only a few black women are chasing the good black dudes. In the white society, it's the reverse. All the black, all the white women are chasing the good black, good white dudes. All of them. They are insulated. How are you going to get in there? How are you going to get in there between all of the white women that's out there? It's a very difficult job. It's a very difficult job. How are you going to do it? And take all of the bad behaviors that you have over here, over there. How are you going to do it? White women that's chasing good good white dudes, they're going to blow you out of the water. They cook, clean, do the, they're they going to blow you out of the water. You think just because you got a fat booty and your breasts are popping out, yeah, the white boy will take you and flip you all day. He will flip you on his hood. He'll flip you in a hotel room. He'll flip you in his car. He'll flip you. But you got to stop counting that as dude trying to marry you because he ain't trying to marry you. The only people trying to marry you is the people that are trying to marry you. They'll say, I'm, let's get married. Let's set a date and get married. That's the only person that's trying to marry you. I hear women saying, oh, I ain't got no problems. I got men all over my DMs. Men, men is in my DMs. And men is... That don't mean shit. You ain't got shit. You ain't got shit until somebody walking your ass down the aisle. When somebody's walking you down the aisle, that's when they realize this is for real. And I have to be in this for the long haul. Other than that, dude's just smashing your ass. That's all he's doing. Everything else is just so he can continue to smash your ass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to get married. Yeah, 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 yeah. But let's wait until I graduate. Let's wait until I get to, to, to supervisor. Let's wait until I get to, you know, assistant manager. Oh, let's wait until I get to the plan you. Plan you. But the white boys are much better at it than the brotherhood. The brotherhood, we be looking stupid. Uh, uh yeah, I'll marry you soon. Uh, uh, uh. The white boys much slicker with it. They're much more smoother. And you ain't never seen no game like they got. So you go on over there and see how they See how they play you. Because the one thing white white boys are good at, they're good at looking like they ain't playing a game when they got they, they got all the marbles right there. <laughs> Shout out to the white boys. They got all the marbles right there. <laughs> but you think they're going to play you? Like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm like they with the business. Okay, you're going to see. You're going to see. My advice to the spice whirlers, bad black women, and divestors. The divestors, go. Bad black women, go. Spice whirlers, go. All of y'all, go. Go. Go see if go see if if it's if it's at all what they say it is. Go see for yourself. Is it really what they say it is? I'm gonna see is it is it is it really what they say it is, and see if you can <clears throat> you see if those white boys gonna let you manipulate them into running around behind you like Minnie Mouse spending all this money on you. Some of y'all are smart enough to realize you need to go after this one of these uh, the white dudes that's way older. At least you got a fighting chance. But if you catch somebody within ten years of you, you're crazy. Forget it. 
Forget it. It's over. It's over. You need at least a 20, maybe even a 30 year gap where you can have a one of these white boys run around you behind you like Minnie Mouse. Maybe. Maybe. Even some of them are smart enough not to do that. But the best advice I got for the rest of us, rest of our women, is be good black women. Learn how to be good black women. What's a good black woman? A good black woman is a woman that knows her place in the world. You know what God sent you here for? God didn't send you here to be supervisor on your job. Sent you here for you to pro promote his family, which is the black family. He, he sent you here to promote the black family by having and raising children up under the leadership of a God-fearing man. That's what you're supposed to be doing. All of this, I'm the supervisor on my job, and I'm, the, I'm this and I'm that. Yeah, that's cool, but that ain't what you would sit here to do. If you were sitting here to do that, you would have never been sent with a with a vagina. The vagina indicates you with the you having a vagina indicates what your role is supposed to be in God's plan, which is bringing forth His family. That's what you're supposed to be doing. A lot of these women are like after that, I don't have to do none of that. So y'all keep listening to Kendra G. People like that. And I bet you, I bet you, I ain't got no crystal ball, but I bet you, even Kendra G after a while is going to be like, this is crazy. See, she talked, she did all that talking about Kevin Samuels. But eventually she going to say the same thing these other two did, uh, these other two dating coaches said, I'm out. I can't do it no more. You, you they, they will not fix, you cannot tell them nothing. And the more you try to tell them how to be so that they can be with a man, they don't want to be it. They fight it. They, they, they go against the grain. Then they wonder how come they got such bad results. But it's easy for them to just say, oh, it's black men. Black men are the reason why we got bad results. So they can throw it on us. Meanwhile, 93% of them are married to us, black men. We don't want taking you in when you other than your weight. We don't want taking you in when you got a whole nother human being's hair in your head. Ain't even your gene line. You got a whole nother person's hair in your head. We taking you in. We don't want taking you in. You got a whole nother person's children with you. We marrying you. We the one taking you with that sailor mouth of yours. We taking you in. We the one that's taking you in with all that debt you got. We taking you in. We're the ones marrying you when you have you you don't have a clue about how to have a maintenance schedule for the cleanliness of the house. We taking you in. We the ones taking you in when you talk about, you know, I don't know how to cook. We taking you in. Because we think we can fix all that stuff. We think we can learn how to, we can. We think you will love us enough to learn how to do all of that stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. That's why, like I told the Kings, uh, uh, conversa Kings of Conversation, shout out to all of those brothers, E Black, Chef, uh, King and uh, my main man, Brother Daryl. Shout out to those cats. But I told them, hey, the best way to have a good marriage is to pick the right person. <laughs> That's the best way. There's going to be what you think there's marriage vows are for. The good times? You know what I mean? Anybody can follow the marriage vows when shit's good. The marriage vows are when things go haywire, when they go sideways. Somebody lose a job. Somebody get on drugs. Somebody have a health scare. There's some infidelity somewhere. That's what vows is for, man, when things go bad. 
but people don't take that into consideration. They think the vows is just part of the ceremony. No, no, marriage, that's why you take marriage vows. Because up until that point, you could cut and run if you want to. But when you take marriage vows, you're saying, I ain't finna cut and run. No matter what happens here, I'm not gonna cut and run. I may, I may take a breather. I may go to my mama's house for a minute, but I'm not gonna cut and run. I'm not gonna just drop everything because I got children involved in the situation. I got a life I'm trying to build with this man. I got a life I'm trying to build with this woman. I can't just drop it just because they made a mistake. Let's see if we can work it out. At least try to work it out. If you can. Anyway, y'all, that's my time. I got I, I'm in two and a half hours today. Uh, we had. <laughs> can you believe that biracial dude? Wow. But that just let us know that you know this channel is putting out the truth. And if you agree with what we're doing, try to help us in any any way you can. You know what I'm saying? If you can if you, if you can teach on something, if you can come on the program and teach. If you can just come and say a word, if you can just come in the chat, whatever you can do to help promote the program, please share, like, subscribe, whatever. I got brother Daniel, he comes through and he's gonna be teaching some other stuff. I mean, we got so many different things we're gonna be doing. I mean, this is the place you need to be. And you see the devil has already attacked us, right? So that lets you know who's up. Why would we get attacked by the devil if we was on the same team with the devil? Huh? Think about that one. The devil's only going to attack his enemies. So, if I'm the devil's enemy, I'm God's beloved. Anyway, all of us are all of our all of us are brothers and sisters. Those of you that had the patience to deal with me tonight and then even to deal with that situation, I apologize to you. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do better and try to vet people that come on here, man, because I had no clue something like that was gonna happen, man. So I should have spoken to the cat first before I even had him come up, you know, had him brought him up. So anyway, but I learned something tonight. I learned something. Praise be to Allah. I learned something. All right. So to my, to my uh, hard driving soldiers. I will see y'all in the next live stream. It probably will be on Sunday. We'll figure out what the topic will go, is going to be. I thank y'all, Sister G, Brother D, and whoever else is up in here. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for listening, and I will see y'all on the next broadcast. Peace.